This week's channel message from the angels is a big one and a very exciting one. Uh, it contains a ton of information. This was a Q&A session between me and a friend of mine when, uh, when I, was in, I was in trance with the angels and she asked the questions and she asked some great questions and they shared some very important information with us. They talk about, uh, in this message, they talk about our new state of consciousness and describe what it's going to be like. It's very exciting information. They talk about not just one wave of light, but three waves of light coming to the planet and how that's going to affect us. They talk about the about war, what's going to happen in the realm of war. They talk about the separation of the United States. They talk about the earth changes that are coming. They talk about climate and what's going to go on with the climate. So there's a ton of incredibly specific information here for you guys. So welcome back to my channel. <laughs> this is a doozy. This is a long message, but I know you guys are, are going to be happy to receive it. Um, I believe that in in sharing the information, I, uh, I I felt, especially as I was going over some of the harder parts, there was waves of energy moving through me to the point where I actually felt dizzy. So I think that there's a lot of activation that comes with this. I think they're doing that to help us because we are not meant to receive this information in fear. We're meant to receive this from the heart space to know that we are going to be okay, to give us the information so that when things happen, that we expect them, that we can have, the, have things that seem surprising, that are out of our comfort zone happen and have us look at them and say, oh, I know what that is. And I know this is guided and I know we're going to be fine so that we can stay in that open space of allowing, right? Being allowing to open to this energy that's coming to us. So, uh, so, so that's, that's the big thing, but just to be aware, like I said, that there is a lot of, I believe a lot of energy transmission in this recording. Um, so uh, welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, <laughs> my name is Ann Tucker. I am a trans channel. I channel from the angelic realm. And I do that by raising my uh, my awareness as high as I can go. I go a little higher. I connect. And then uh, energies uh, come through. Energy and healing uh, messages that I share here with you guys on YouTube. Um, and uh, like I said, this message is a, a, a long, I think it's about an hour and a half almost, this message uh, of a, a, a Q&A session uh, and where they go into all these different topics, they speak much more clearly than they do sometimes. Um, uh, so I think this is an easier one to follow. So in the breakdown, I will share the message with you initially, and then I break it down at the end. Uh, but I kind of skim because there is so much content here. But I think you will understand what they're saying uh, uh, through it. So all right. Um, I hope you guys love the message. And I wanted to let you guys, for those of you, let you know, for those of you who are interested in Soul Convergence, we are starting on February 10th. It is coming up. I will be doing two lives here on YouTube to uh, to talk about it, to tell you about it. And also one of the big ones I want to do is I have learned so much through the process of running this program that that uh, that it, about healing, about the integration of the masculine and feminine, it is just incredible information. My own sense of how things are coming together has just expanded exponentially. And I want to share that with you guys. So I want to do a live where I just, I just talk about that, where I just share with you guys what I have learned through this process. And I'm going to do the two lives. It'll be in uh, January. So it'll be on a Saturday, January 10 a.m. I haven't uh, I can't remember the dates right now, but I will um, uh, I will let you know, or I will just, you know what, in post-production, I will put them right there. <laughs> so there you go. Because you know, I'm not that great with dates. So, uh, but I've, I've got two dates in mind and I will, I will uh, be live here on YouTube with you guys to share. Uh, one live will be specifically about the, uh, about that, about what I've learned about the process of healing. And then the second live will be sharing some of what happened in soul convergence. So I'll be bringing on some of the dream analysts that have been helping me to deliver this program. And we're going to share some of what they experienced and some of the stories from some of the people who've been in the program. So super eye opening. So I think you guys are going to want to come to both, but, uh, but all right, I hope you guys love the message. All right, here we go. They say, um, where do we start? Here it is. Uh, and it's, I'm, this is about specifically about the future changes that are coming. They say, perceive an understanding that all things in separation can be different from what we are speaking. Understanding that the circumstances we reveal are constantly changing. There are without hesitation, some things we can reveal to yourselves. Have the understanding that though we speak upon them, they can and may and shall be in some circumstances revealing themselves not exactly as we described, but similarities will yet be present. There are some things which are determined upon, which shall not change, which are irrevocably predetermined, 
and these we can elucidate. We speak to yourselves now of some of these things. And then, uh, and then the question she asked was, uh, so uh, I was looking clairvoyantly recently and saw an something that surprised me. I was looking at uh, at a, a specific street that I know, and I was I was using a new uh, ability. This is a long story, long story, but uh, I was looking at it now and then anticipating what it would be in the future. And I, I was expecting to see an area that would be, you know, in hardship, or I was expecting it to be an area where I saw community coming together, right? I had certain thoughts in my mind about what it would be, that it would be, you know, maybe I would see neighborhoods pulling together and helping each other. And what I saw really, really surprised me. What I saw was that certain houses were just empty, where there was just nobody in them. And this is just me seeing clairvoyantly, seeing like, like, oh my gosh, like I did not expect to see like this house some has someone in it, this house has someone in it, but these other houses are just empty. And there was no explanation for why, like, where did people go? Like, where, what happened here? And so that, uh, I told my friend about that and she asked specifically, like, what was it? What did that mean? And so here is what they're answering, their answer to that question. They say, you were shown this now as an understanding that humanity is in the appearance of having all things as they are now, all things the same. But in the near future, all things will not be the same. There are changes that are coming. Within yourselves, in the condition of humanity, there will be a separation that you experience. Those that are feeling themselves resigned to be in the present, to be in presence in an alternate field of reality will not experience the endowment of grace. They will find themselves greatly tranquilized in their experience of what you are now reflecting upon, and they will not experience it. They will find themselves having an experience not like death, but not surrender. They are not at peace. They are against what is coming. They feel themselves resigned, registered to the frequency of resistance. For this reason, we find them not appearing. Their appearance is not becoming as physically present in the endowment of what is illumination. They come not forward into the light. They will not seek it. They will find themselves struggling, suffering more than yourselves. They will find themselves in a heightened state of fear. Overwhelm speaks to them. Their hearts struggle. They find themselves suffering, struggling, underwater. Not as you are thinking now, not the flooding, not as though they are carried away by water, but their experience of life, their sensation of what it is to be alive feels like drowning. They... Oops. Sorry, this is appears to be not in order. They find themselves struggling in the sense of loss, as though all things are lost, as though loss surrounds them, as though they are drowning, as though they cannot become alive again in the context where they find themselves and they do not feel the light. They wish to become more like it was. And then they shift to the next topic. They say, you will find yourselves carried forward with great momentum into a space of opening recognition of more things than you are aware of. You will start to be carry a frequency and vibration higher than where you are now. It will come over yourselves with great suddenness, an overwhelming sense of I am alive now, where I was in shadow, as though the difference is palpable. An overwhelming sense of life-giving essence coming into yourselves as the light transfers into your body and is held there in permanence. And you are carried forward in your, perceptive, in your perception toward a sense of yourselves as carrying this light always, as though an endowment has been given of graceful presence that surrounds you now. The light you carry is registered in the eyes of others, and they can see this now as though you are illuminated in your presence. Your grace is becoming palpable in the field of reality that you live in. This will help yourselves in the endowments that are coming. You will receive them as a graceful prospect, as something welcome, that you let in fully, wholly into yourselves. You accept this now and going forward. You receive these endowments of grace. In the becoming, find yourselves living on earth as you have been, but now without seeking the same experience that you have been having. It becomes a difference. 
you find a recognition of who you are as something separated no more from the everything. In oneness, you begin to exist with all things, a consciousness separated no more. This experience can transform your method and way of living completely. A sense of living within the habitat of creation as it has been, but endowed with the knowledge of how things are created. Thus, in the sense of yourselves as living in lack and poverty has no significance. It does not matter to yourselves what is in physical presence, because all is malleable, changeable, alterable. It cannot signify if you are unwell in a moment, because you can transfer that awareness out of yourselves and magnify what is pleasant. You have the ability to consciously transfer. Alteration of things in your physical arena becomes a reality you can experience. Physicality is not as dense as it has seemed. It is not as it has been where the physical touch pressing upon an object, upon a physical object in its, its density registers as not malleable. It becomes something, yes, you can see and touch and feel and experience and also change in its significance and in significant ways. You can alter its shape and contortion in some cases. You can make it feel differently to yourself. You can alter its energy and thus its countenance. Permeability becomes the stuff of human existence. All things are permeable to your perception, to your knowledge about them. You exist in oneness with everything and can alter the substance of what is around yourselves, and yet you are living in the physical presence on earth. You have a physical body and can transform it to some degree, not in all ways. You do not wish to alter everything, for some things shall remain as they are. Some things shall stay unalterable, but your encountering of them can change. You move within a landscape that is different. It is a great change in conscious awareness and the understanding of the physicality around yourselves. And the questioner says, it sounds like this directly impacts and affects the way we create what is around us, our lives. And they reply, yes, in a significant manner, this is what we are saying. And she asks, so it becomes easier and more fluid to manifest what we are needing. And they reply, correct, in harmony with the planet and what you are seeing. Not all will feel this presence as we have explained. Some will feel great resistance to the oncoming waves of consciousness that we are explaining. Some will feel themselves repelled, held apart, not participating. You will feel them and their experience and have sympathy and great compassion for their hearts are suffering. It will feel as though the earth has divided itself, yet all possess the same terrain and substance of the plane of earth, though it incorporates two states of awareness. This will not enable those who are unwilling to shift to return to the earth. They cannot come back, but they will remain until their experience here is finished. There will be those who are in the experience of great disturbing loss, but yourselves will feel the earth as a new place of harmonic convergence where all experience is as one being. You feel her, the earth, within yourselves, as yourselves, an embodiment, as what it is to be human. It will become an embodiment connected to the earth herself, as though her presence defines you equally with your soul and spirit, as though you are one organism. This experience will be available to yourselves relatively soon. We wish to say, to speak about how you will find yourselves in service, Will there be those who are capable of journeying from the state of suffering to the state of awareness? And we say there will be many who are seeking the light, who wish to understand themselves, who are open to journeying, who are not established in the experience of life as hardship, but who are opening to the light, who are willing. A great vast number of peoples will be willing to experience the light within themselves, but have hardship in the encounter cannot diagnose for themselves where there is difficulty and will see yourselves as illuminated and have the understanding that you are of a quality that can help them. 
It will be evident, exposed illumination will be evident to all who see you now. The questioner asks, does this come through the solar flare we've been expecting? And they respond, it does now. A solar influx energetic, which we've been speaking of, a great flash of light and awareness. Presence, divine presence, we call this, comes to this plane of ex experience and you accept this as part of your own being. Others do not. The endowment is coming in the near future. There will be a mirror image of this flash of light waves. Three times it is coming. Three times uh, coming, incoming. Each experience becomes more potent and more powerful, as though the gradual elevating of humanity is considered, so that all may participate now, if they are consciously present and willing. Three consciousness waves elevating humanity. The questioner asks, Will there be more war coming to earth? How does that fit into the timeline of everything? And they respond, war is pressing upon yourselves in greater depth and profundity. There will be hardship around this concept of hatred against each other. There will be a causal disturbance within humankind. Separation is exposing itself. Separation is coming to the forefront of the human consciousness. Separation on all fronts, in all feelings, it is disturbing to the human awareness. A great wartime will spread. Across Europe, it is being expected. And for yourselves, within the context of this state and the nation of the United States, there will be a great division ongoing, increasing separation, increasing division, to the point of separation among your, amongst yourselves, to the point of inconclusion in your practices, where things are no longer perceived as needing to be done or followed. Rulings do not belong to one another, inacceptable in some places. They simply relinquish their hold, their grasp of belonging. Let go of their affiliation to this greater country, which you have called home. Let go and surrender their belonging and become in and of themselves their own country and stay apart. This starts becoming reality within this next period of opening. The states unravel and become separated and find between themselves new alliances can be formed, formed apart from everybody, between themselves. A period of lack and starvation are coming to this plane of existence, a great unearthing of the planet, as you are aware of, a great disturbance of the crust of this plane. It creates for yourselves a disturbance geomagnetic, and polarization becomes irregular. There is a global dislocation of energetic pull, which moves, which moves in and among yourselves great torrents of water, not as it has been discussed, not to the point of extinction by any means. This is not happening. It is not a circumstance by which the surface is engulfed in the ocean. This will not come to pass. But there is, in this destabilization, a great turmoil and thrusting of the oceans, a great magnetic pull which forces the arrival of the disturbance of the crust, and there is expulsion, energetic turmoil, and this creates upheaval. Geomagnetic, as we have spoken, which creates the upheaval of the crust. The displacement of water, which does engulf certain territories. There is an inundation in certain places which cannot be avoided. The circumnavigation of the planet becomes difficult. It cannot be found as it was. Great changes take place on the surface of this plane of existence. Things are no longer as they were. There is a great deal of dislocation of soil, of earth, momentum, movement within the crust. You find yourselves thrust forwards, not backwards, forwards into greater prominence on the earth, brought into a space of more freedom within this locale. Greater resistance, restrictive practices are let down. They cannot be succumbed to any longer. It must become a state of free thinking, forward thinking, forward practices to draw forward to humanity what will encompass a new belief system, new concepts of being alive, what it is to be human, all changes. There is within this process, this great shift, there is the upheaval of the climate. You are wondering about the growing of food about the change of the temperature of the earth and will it be possible to grow your own food? And we say yes in some cases, 
not in all places because of the inundations. Some places are made uninhabitable. They can no longer be claimed for human population. But in the places where people are, the earth is readied. The topsoil is good. But you will find yourself struggling to provide the same nutritive density for some time because the solar availability is more limited. There will be a complexity in the environment caused by, the, by, a, by a great enshroudment of cloud. This will cause for yourselves a more restrictive abundance of illumination. The solar impact on this plane will be lessened for a short time, which will impact foodstuffs globally. It will not stay long, however, but one growing season is enough to create disharmony and starvation. Do you understand us? And then she asks, they... Uh, then that ten, then that tells me to grow cold weather crops and shade crops, and they respond correct, and to avail yourselves of illuminative sources which will propagate more easily your plantings, to avail yourselves of some illumination that can be sufficient. Illumination will aid yourselves in the growth of some things. Do not fear, you will have enough. It will be provided for yourselves. It will be enough. It will not be a circumstance where you are in poverty here. It will not be in it will not be in all places. In all places, in places without the endowment of savings, who do not have the riches of their own place, that do not have foodstuffs availability, foodstuff availability generally, will find themselves without much. There will not be the shipments to which they are accustomed. There will not be the availability of foodstuffs uh, to be transferred via the oceans. There will not be the exchange of foodstuffs between countries and the many nations and many nations count upon this. Many places are with, without their own indigenous ability to grow things, but where that is not the case, there will be enough. Okay, I told you it was a lot, you guys. <laughs> yeah, it was a long, it was like seven pages of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, right. And and amazing stuff, like incredible stuff. And then also like hard stuff mixed in there, like for sure. Like this is, and I feel like very lightheaded right now as I'm sharing this with you guys. Um, uh, so yeah. So, and just to read what you guys were saying, Elizabeth is saying, oh my God, this was in my dream. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Rebecca says, wow, all is malleable and changeable. Yep. Je Jennifer says, I felt that deeply. I know me too. I'm still like, I'm, I'm like, I'm literally dizzy. Uh, uh, yeah. Rebecca says, wow. Describing the solar flares in a whole new way, as well as war and separation. Amazing. Yeah. I love the idea that the earth movement will allow us forward much better way to, to imagine earthquakes. Yeah, for sure. So I, there is so much in this, but I kind of made, uh, like I made some notes and then some highlights. So I, my thought was, let's go ahead and go through it. And we'll just kind of, I'll just kind of go over the major themes because I feel like the way they're talking, a lot of it is, is pretty self-evident. There's some things with that I feel like we need to explain or go into more deeply uh, to make sure. And Donna's saying, grateful for my tower garden. What a message. I know, right? And I mean, and I think like, like it's really important, I think, as we're hearing this stuff, is you know that they never, ever share anything. They never want to put us into fear. And they said many times in this, like, don't worry, you're going to be okay. But they want us to know, like... Number one, biggest thing is massive shift in how we relate to being alive, like how we feel about like the whole concept we have about being human is going to change. And I don't know, as they're describing this, like some of this that they're describing, like maybe some of this is something that happens over a long period of time. Like it could be a thing that we grow into over time, or it could be things, something that's like, boom. We let in this light and we become different. They said there are three waves. So we don't know, like the first wave I think is coming soon, but we don't know what the gap of time will be between wave one, wave two, and wave three. I think the whole point of this is that it gives us time to grow and to, to move into this new state of consciousness. So, uh, so this could be unfolding for some period of time. But the overall theme about this, I think, is they're saying that, that we go through a period right now where the concept of separateness rises to the forefront, where we face this in ourselves, we face it in the world. Like this is the reason where, why war is coming up, why there's this increased division everywhere, division between people, even division like in the United States, you're talking about division. So separateness comes to the forefront, right? And then my understanding, they didn't say it here. My understanding from past channelings is that it's like in the middle of this, like we bring all this to the surface, bring separateness up. And then this flash of light comes and it brings us into unity. So it's like we have to 
purge. We have to purge this concept of separation and bring it up. And that's, that's, you know, war that's falling apart of past alliances, past agreements, setting down of, of kind of the way we've been. Um, but they're really, really big here on not to fear that they, they do specify and say, and, and there's part in here where they're talking about it's, they're saying it's definitely not that concept. Like I know there's been some discussion of theories out there that we're going to have a shift in, uh, like a polar shift which would create like the oceans would like engulf the world and it's like Noah's flood and everybody dies. And they're saying that's not happening, <laughs> which is like, phew, right? <laughs> and, uh, but they are saying that there will be inundations, which, which that word means like water coming in to, to areas that normally don't have water. So the oceans are jiggled is what it sounds like to me. Like the oceans are, are, you know, are jiggled around and they do come in in some places. And I think they're just, my understanding of that section when we get there is that it's like, it's like there's something that happens with our magnetic poles or with magnetism where it's like, it's like, it's, it's, I don't know, I can't describe it. It's like a jiggle. It's like a jiggle of the planet, <laughs> like a rattle or a shake of the planet. And it, it messes with things a little bit and it moves the water a little bit and it moves the crust a little bit and it shifts things. And so it's almost like certain things come up and certain things come down and water comes in in some places. It, it's a jiggle. I guess I can't, I don't know how to describe that better than that. A jiggle. <laughs> so, so something happens like that. And it, and it, that's what I'm, uh, that's my interpretation of what they're saying. And that, and that, that all of this, I think it is, they've said before that shipping is as an industry is a catastrophic industry, that shipping is not good. So, so when we're thinking about like, what are the areas to be? And people are always asking, like, am I safe where I am? The big question I would ask is, do you, where you live, do you rely on things to be shipped to you in order to survive? So like in my first thing that pops to my head is like Alaska. Like my daughter was just living in Alaska for like, uh, for the last, for like eight months or, or six months. And she was up there and, and then she recently moved away. She was there for a work assignment. But, uh, but she had to, like every week, the, the barge would come and that would be their groceries for the week, right? And, and it was like a thing where everybody in the town would like race to the store on Tuesdays, you know what I mean? To like get whatever fresh vegetables came in. Cause if, if you didn't get it then, they were gone. And, uh, and so that circumstance is not good if there's no shipping. So, you know, and I think, you know, in Alaska, they go, do they, does, you know, like, so that would not be a place I would choose to be because of the issue of shipping, unless you were in a situation, uh, where you could somehow create your own food, you know, or if you had a bunch of food stored or something like that, but, but it's, that's hard. It's hard to, to do that. It's hard economically to store a big stock. And then it's really not a, uh, a, a long-term solution. So I guess any long-term solutions where we are relying on uh, globalization, are they're not good solutions. And so I would say, like, as long as you're in a place, and it, it might mean, like, you know, like where I live, there's a lot of things I use all the time that I won't be able to get if we don't have shipping. Like, I'm vegan, or mostly vegan. I eat eggs sometimes. But, uh, but like, in vegan cuisine or plant-based cuisine, I should say, that's more accurate, um, that uh, that we use a lot of cashews you know, for everything. And cashews do not grow here. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. So it's like, yeah, okay, I won't have that, you know? I, and, but there is a lot of stuff that is grown here. So I would say that is the homework that we all take for ourselves is learning what do we, what do we grow locally? What can we find around ourselves? And if you find that you're in a place that doesn't have a lot locally, that's something to really think hard about. And, or uh, if you're in a place where, where you can get things via land, from one place to another, maybe that's okay. But it sounds like there will be a period, not a long period, but a period where there is less because we have the cloud cover, as they describe it. There's something overhead that's blocking out that we get less sun. And so it's going to affect growing, a growing season. So, you know, they've been telling us for a long time, have rice and beans, you know what I mean? Like if you don't have to get anything fancy, that there will be some things available, but it's not a bad idea to think ahead about like, okay, if it's going to be a period where there's less, can I have a little bit more backstock so that I'm all right, you know, so that I'm, I have that basic needs met. And we're really talking about like, if we know it's temporary, you know, we don't need to have, you know, fancy, fancy food. <laughs> we don't need to have everything. We just think basics, just have some basics, basic stuff. And they said very clearly in the beginning 
that they are willing to share this information with us, but we need to understand that things may show up differently than they're saying, that it may not turn out exactly this way. So we need to take it with a grain of salt. Use your own discernment. If, if you hear all this stuff and you go like, this does not land for me at all, then listen to your own heart, right? Listen to your own guidance. Um, and they did say that it, it's, it may, that they're, that as it is, they say things might turn out this way. They, they, that things can always change. So, and that may be the case, but I consider this to be a super hopeful and encouraging message because they're telling us, yeah, there's going to be a hard period that we have to get through. And they're giving us some parameters to understand if we are in a safe place or not a safe place and what to do in terms of making our place a little bit safer for us and our families. And then they say, wow, 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 do we have some amazing things coming? And boy, is there a purpose to being here now, right? That there's, there's the ability to help others. And they say there will be a lot of people who are looking for help, that it will become the thing to seek the light, right? That, that, that it will be visible. They'll be able to see the light, right? To know like, like, okay, this person is a little bit brighter and shinier than me. I want to talk to them. Like, how did you get so bright and shiny? Like, can I have some of that, right? So talk about sharing your gifts and being called to share your gifts. This is the time. This is the moment, you know, to do it where you can really help others. So, yeah. So, okay. So let's talk through a little bit of what the specifics are in here as much as we, we want to go into the, the depth of it. And you're saying, um, uh, you say, just saw the notification, going to watch the replay. Fantastic. Yes, Susan. I know. And after I just say all that, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> I know. And Susanna, hey, great to see you. You're saying thank you for sharing this with all of us. You are so welcome. You guys know it's, I used to have a lot more uh, conflict around sharing these messages. And then I realized you guys all know this stuff already. Like you do, like deep inside you, there's a part of you that goes, mm-hmm. You know, many of you are saying like, I dreamt about this. Yeah, so many of you have had dreams of three waves. Like sometimes we see it as three waves of water, which is three waves of spirit. And now I used to think it was water. Now I understand it is it is divine presence is what's coming to the planet. Three waves of divine presence. And so you're dreaming about it, right? You know, this is coming. <laughs> we all know it. So I feel like now I'm not telling you something new. I am just confirming something you have all felt and that we have all been suspecting on some level. So I, I just take that credit. And I put it right back on you. <laughs> if you're freaking out, I'm like, it's not mine. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So anyways, but that's what helps me to share it with you guys is I know that we all own and we all own this. We all own this truth. It's for all of us. Yeah. So M says, what is soon for the first wave? Six months, a year, three weeks? I don't know. All I can tell you is I will tell you guys that I channeled once before that they said that the energy sits heavy on the spring of next year. And so I don't know if that means the light is coming. I don't know if that means an expansion of war in the spring. Something's coming in the spring. Probably, you know, like, yeah, sometime in the spring of next year, something's coming. Something, something, something. So maybe it's this. Maybe it's more war. Maybe it's, but there's be something. And they, they did specifically, and they rarely give me time frames. But when they do, they have been very accurate. And their time frames come like that. Like one time they told me this will happen in the next lunar cycle, and then it did. Um, so it's not like they say like April 20th or whatever. They don't give me a day. They say, come in in the spring. So heavy on the spring. So we'll just take that for what it is. So, uh, okay. And so, and just know, I think like with the waves of light, they might be spread out, but they also said in another channeling, they said that when this wave comes, this first wave of light that they described in a past channeling, and you can find that on YouTube in the playlist, that there's a, there's one that specifically, it's about the wave of light, the first wave of light. They say that when it hits, we will, uh, it will be a, a thing that it will be the moment we all look back to and say, that's what changed everything. So it's, it, the first wave is significant, right? That that's a big deal. The first wave is. Yeah. And Teresa says, I must've been led. I just purchased a 25 pound bag of beans looking into dehydrators. Yeah. Phenomenal. And just knowing that this is not a call for us to go like prepper crazy because that's not, they do, when we go too much into that energy, we go into the energy of fear. So think of it like, like if you can just put it in your head, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to think about like, like a getting, you know, rice, but I would say rice and beans, but there are so many options. If you don't like rice and beans, you can do quinoa and, you know, whatever, like, as we're really only talking about a short period of time, they talked about one harvest 
in the message. I don't know if this is one year, two years. I don't know. So, but think about like, you know, you don't need to have everything just very basic because there will be things available. They have said there will be stuff available. It's just what will get you through if things are a little leaner than you'd like or if the, your favorite thing isn't available. So, yeah, but it's super imp important that we do it from the presence of feeling great. Like go into it and say, what will make me feel happy to have and, and do that. Like come in from it from a space of love towards yourself and not fear and recognize that you will be okay, right? And to come in and just embody that before you take any action, do not come into any decision from a state of fear. Always come into it from the place of what does my heart want? Where am I led? What is What feels good to my heart? Because then we're in the positive energy of love. Yeah. Hey, Linda, glad you to join us. Yeah, and saying spring. Yep, Linda says, I double, I remember double remembrance. I thought it meant remembrance day. I did too. And I don't know, like, I don't know what that means. And they remember them stay, saying that. And I thought it, that was what I thought too, remember today. So there may be some event around that as well. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So let's go on and see what they say. Um, uh, so in the beginning, they basically are saying, um, uh, they're saying that things might not show up the way they are saying exactly, but similarities will yet be present. There are some things which are predetermined upon, uh, which shall not change, which are irrevocably predetermined. So, so basically saying some things may not be exactly as they say, some things will be. Um, uh, and then they go on to say, uh, so my, my friend asked a question about what about seeing in these visions that I had of empty houses? What does that mean? And here they say, you are shown this now as an understanding that humanity is in the appearance of having. So, so in other words, right now we seem like, it seems like everything is as the way that is the way they always have been. But in the near future, all things will not be the same. So we're going to be going into a significant shift coming soon. There are changes that are coming within yourselves in the condition of humanity. And this is important here. They say there will be a separation that you experience. Those that are feeling themselves resigned to be in, the pre to be in presence in an alternate field of reality will not experience the endowment of grace. So what they mean by this is that there will be, there will be those people who are open and who will surrender to this light. And this is something they have been talking to us about. Like there was a period, I think in the last two years, there was like message after message after message where they just kept saying open, surrender, be in the flow, be allowing. Like it was like every message was be allowing. This is what they're talking about. Be open to receive this illumination that's coming. And to let go of our expectations was another big thing they kept talking about that if we have an expectation about what it's gonna be like, we limit what can come. So it is that idea of try your best to just open your mind and to see things with it, like the spirit of a child, as though you're seeing things you do not understand. Like, the, like a child coming into the world has no preconceptions. We're not trying to put things into buckets, into categories. We just receive it and we just try to feel it and, and be in the body as much as you can to experience it bodily because that's what brings you back to that childlike experience. Stay out of your head, be in the heart, feel it right? Live it. And that's how we stay out of our expectations. And that's how we open to perceive things that we can't understand is by feeling, being immersed in it physically. So they're telling us to do that. It's super important, but they're saying there'll be a separation between people who are willing to come into it from a heart centered place. And those people who are trying very hard to fit it in their knowledge box, right? Who are trying to put it into a container and who are looking around themselves and noticing the hardship and noticing that things have changed and noticing the things that they've counted upon, that they've relied upon aren't there anymore. And they may dig in and be in incredible fear, like all of their triggers coming up, right? All their fear of, am I all right, are going to come up. And for them, they're going to be in a sense of, of not necessarily, it's like if you ask them, they might not say they're resisting the light, but what they're resisting is change. They're resisting the loss of what they had before because they don't understand or or can't quite yet grasp how to live in this new way. So they're very, very, very fearful. And that that creates a separation, a divide between people. And there are those people who receive the light and those people who, and it is that energy of resistance is the thing that creates the divide. And so in other words, the light is available to everyone. The light wants to be accepted. Divine presence is is, is wants to be with everyone. But, but everything, like all, even like healing, healing is about us. We have to allow it. We have to receive it. And this is the same. We have to allow the light. We have to be open. We have to get out of our head into our heart to see it. 
And so some people will not. Some people will be so in fear, is so much trying to cling to what they have, so trying to gather up and keep and store and hold. That's why they don't want us to get into that survivor mode because that's resistance. And that, that then puts them in, it's like it creates, like I said, this separation. And, uh, and you're saying um, uh, that uh, expectation can derail us from what is or what can be exactly. Teresa says, yes, that was my dream. Return to being as a child. No judgment, just curiosity. That is awesome. Yes, exactly, Teresa. Super cool dream. And Jennifer says, I just said those exact words last night. Be in your heart and get out of your mind. I love these synchronicities. That is so cool. Yeah. So, um, okay. So then in this concept of separation, so notice how often this comes up in this concept as they're discussing this, they say, and I, there is a lot of energy in this because I am again, feeling like woozy as I'm, I'm seriously woozy as I'm talking about. So there's a lot of energy coming through this message. Uh, even though this one, yeah. So very, very interesting. You guys, I'm just noticing that as I'm reading it to you guys, I'm almost dizzy. They say they will find themselves greatly tranquilized in their experience of what you are now reflecting upon and they will not experience it. So, and think of it, they'll use the word tranquilized. So it's like, it's like, uh, it's like not being able to see it. So it's like being subdued in their energy field, right? Uh, so imagine that. And they find themselves having an experience, not like death. So this isn't, they're not, it's not, they're not dying, but not surrender, right? They're not in flow. They're not at peace. They are against what is coming. They feel themselves resigned, registered to the frequency of resistance. For this reason, they we find them not appearing. So this is why when I looked at that street, I saw people were not visible in certain houses because I'm seeing it from the perspective of the angels. So who is appearing in the light? Who is not appearing in the light? So it is not a situation where they poof, disappear, right? From existence, they're still there. They're just not stepping into the light. So think of that as they're in shadow. And there are people who are in the light, become visible. Those who are not, are not visible. This is from the perspective, this is trying to show me from an angelic perspective, what they are seeing here. This, this person has stepped into the light. This person has stepped into the light and these people didn't, right? So that's, that helped me to understand what was going on, which I was relieved. You could imagine where my mind went when I saw that. I'm like, but I didn't see like death or anybody like, where did they go? You know what I mean? Like my mind is worrying. And so that was the reason for the question. Yeah. But great news. <laughs> They're still there. They're just not yet open to the light. So uh, see, their appearance is not becoming as physically present in the endowment of what is illumination. They come not forward into the light. Yeah. So that is what's going on. So I'm skipping through because this is very long and we will be here for hours if we go through it like we usually do. But um, uh, but they talk a lot here about how what their experience will be and that it will be very hard. And that we really, I think they're bringing this to our minds because they want us to be available to help them. And I think that is, we think of what is the mission of a light worker? This, like, this is a big part of it, right? Is right? They're saying overwhelm speaks to them, their heart struggle. They find themselves suffering, struggling underwater, right? Not in terms of like this big tidal wave type thing that people have heard about, but more about, uh, and I think there still will be, they said there'll be a great jostling, shifting of the ocean. There, st there will be inundations, but not the whole planet isn't going to be covered in water like some people have been worried about. Um, uh, they say their experience of life, their sensation of what it is to be alive feels like drowning. So imagine that drowning is this, the feeling of just like where everything is just, you're losing everything. Like everything is like, you're just, you cannot, you cannot, uh, you can't make it. You can't survive, right? There's this feeling of like total powerlessness. So that's a terrible feeling. And I think they want to make us aware of that because they will need help, that we will need to be available to help those people. And they say, find themselves struggling in the sense of loss as though all things are lost, Right as the loss surrounds them, as though they are drowning, as though they cannot become alive again in the context of where they find themselves. And they do not feel the light. They wish to become, they wish to become more like it was. Yeah, so that's heavy, very heavy. Um, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, where are you? Say, uh, Lane, hey, Lane, great to see you. And then Jennifer says, yes, I feel beautiful energy, pure bliss. Absolutely. Teresa says, I don't feel like I'm in survivor mode. I feel remember uh, how my grandma lived. I helped her cut up and dry apples. I grow a garden now. Don't want to rely on a freezer. She didn't have one. Super cool that you have those skills. That's a great thing to teach others. That's awesome. Sherry says, and I sure as many listen to and are asking themselves, I think and hope I'll be on the side of the light ego like to poke at us. And I think that is the big thing is we fear that we're not going to be one of the ones. 
And they have told us before that all you have to do is be willing and that's it. So you are here, you're listening. Yes, of course, of course you will be receiving the light and, and you may have some fear and that's normal because we don't know what it is, but are you open? Are you, are you willing? And if you are willing, then it's coming for you. <laughs> so it's, it is not a thing to worry about. Like it is, uh, it, it is not a hard thing to be open to. It, it's hard in the sense that it, we just have to overcome our, like it, it, the, the big thing to be aware of is, are we clinging to what was as this light comes or are we open to receiving the light? And that's it. That's the only difference. So it's a pretty clear thing we can see in ourselves. If you are willing to say, okay, I'm going to trust, requires trust. I'm going to trust that I'm going to be okay. And even if you can just hold that vibration for a minute, I'm going to trust that I'm, this is going to be great. I'm going to trust that it's going to be okay. And you just let, let it come in, you know, and you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. And Jennifer says, I have an adult son. I worry about it. I send him lots of love and white light. And that is the best that we can do. I have kids too. My, my daughter just moved to the other side of the country. And of course I worry. And yes, I bought her rice and beans <laughs> before I left. Yes, I did. You know, yeah, I worry about that. But I trust. Like it was clear that she was guided to be there. And so we got to trust that they are on their own path. And just because somebody that you love may not be ready when this energy hits the planet, that's the whole point is their journey may come right after. Their journey may come where all of a sudden they recognize that there's light around them and they, they it shifts something in them and they think, oh my gosh, I want that. So this could be the impetus that causes them to seek the light, which is great. So just because the wave comes and somebody doesn't get it right then doesn't mean it's not available to them, right? This is their opportunity to see it. It breaks through the barriers that we have right now, which is that, that it's not obvious. You know, it becomes obvious, which to me is that's part of the exciting thing is that it's like they angels told us before that they would become visible to us, that people would have direct experience of seeing angels. Well, what if that angel is you? You know, what if you are the one they see and that light that you carry becomes an inspiration for them and they cannot deny that there is more than just this physical world and this physical body. And they all of a sudden realize that what they thought was important in life isn't and they start to seek the light. Right. And that's, I think, a big part of this. Because it has to be a respecting of free will. It's not like they can come in and just zap each of us and be like, you're light <laughs> and you're light. <laughs> they can't do that. It has to be choice. So we're, they're doing this in such a way. They put us all here so that people would see it, right? And see it in you. And then they would have the choice to be inspired by that. Yeah, which is so cool. So, um, uh, so then uh, going through here, um, where are we? Okay, so the next section they go into, they're talking about how the difference is palpable, right? That that it will come over yourselves with great suddenness, this flash of light, and it becomes a palpable difference, an overwhelming sense of life-giving essence coming into yourselves as the light transfers into your body and is held there in permanence. So this is the wave of light, the flash of light that's coming through, across the planet. I have people I know, friends that have dreamt about this, seen it coming towards them and coming through their bodies, right? Amazing. And so it comes into yourselves and you keep it like it stays there. It changes us permanently, which is so incredible. And, uh, and then they say the light you carry is registered in the eyes of others. And they can see this now as though you are illuminated in your presence. So you keep that light and you literally, it becomes like, there is an aspect of this that people feel now when you walk into a room and you are carrying your full light, like when you feel great, right? When you are really in, like in your best emotion, and you have this high frequency and you come into a room, people like they notice you, they feel you, right? If anything, they gravitate toward you. Unless they're carrying an energy of resistance, they gravitate to you. They, they want to be around that light, that energy. And so imagine that that just goes up several notches to the point where I think it will actually be like, maybe you will be glowy. <laughs> like, how cool is that? Maybe we will be glowy. I don't know. Like, but it will at least be a felt thing, like something that is obvious that people will feel. Like how cool illumination that they will feel. How cool is that? Or see maybe. Yeah. And then uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm sorry I'm skipping because this is so long. But um, but I think you guys can make a lot of sense of this. In the becoming, find yourselves on earth as you have been, but now without thinking the same experience that you've been having. So it's like the things we think are important change. We're not worried about getting ahead in the same way that we have been, right? If, you know, whatever it is that's been bothering us, whatever has been driving us shifts. They say it becomes a difference. You find a recognition of who you are as, as something separated no more from the everything. 
in oneness, you begin to exist with all things, a consciousness separated no more. So this, remember the theme of separation, how we're going through separations, rising to the surface, going through war, going through separation in ourselves. We're encountering all of this, bringing it to the surface to be healed. Then flash of light comes and we are separate no more, right? And this dissolves separation. We, as we step into the light, feel all of a sudden one with everything. And I had a, a vision of this in one of our, uh, I think it was, a, it was, it was either our last peace bathing session or it was one of our soul convergence sessions. I can't remember which one, um, where, uh, we got through a process. And at the end, it was, it was amazing what I could perceive as they were walking it through us, us through it. It was like walking on the earth. Imagine walking through the room that you're in and imagine like I can look at this desk, but the desk no longer looks the same way. It's almost like I see the desk vibrating like I see it as energy like real energy like I don't see it as solid anymore I literally can see every object as and and you can still pick it up and hold it and touch it I can pick up this crystal I have right here yes I have crystals all over my desk <laughs> I am that person and you can pick it up and you can feel it and it's solid but you can also look at it and you can see it as energy like it's vibrating like it's it's like a, a denser energy than the other things around it so it becomes and, but you can understand it because of the energy and you connect to it because of the energy. So it was like, I could say it was like walking through, you know, a little bit like in, um, oh gosh, what is the cool movie? Uh, uh, I, I, I like blah, my brain right now, the movie where Avatar, the movie Avatar were on that world where everything was like, like neon and glowy. Like, it's kind of like that, like where you're walking through the woods and everything is glowy and alive <laughs> and it looks really different because you see it as energy. Like how wild is that? Like, I don't know if that's coming. Like I said, this, these waves, maybe we get one wave in our lifetime. Maybe we get all three in our lifetime. I don't know. Maybe we get to have part of this in our experience, but where humanity is going is to that experience. I know that we are getting to the experience where we walk through a glowy, vibrating world of awesome. Like that's what's coming. Like how cool is that? You know, like I am amazed, amazed. I, it's hard to even wrap my head around it. Yeah. So, so they say, um, uh, yeah, a consciousness separated no more. This experience can transform, uh, uh, your method and way of living completely, a sense of living within the habitat of creation as it has been, but endowed with the knowledge of how things are created. Big one there, big sentence right there, right? That we understand how to, how to, we, we can see the energy. So we learn how to work with the energy. And I think that is going to be a learned process. I think that's something we teach ourselves through trial and error, through learning from each other. We learn how to work with the world differently because we can see it differently. Now we have, it's almost like, well, they call the sixth sense, but I think it's like the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth sense that we be, that comes alive inside of us and we can see things and begin to work with the world in a really different way. But I'm sure it will be a learned process. It'll be something we learn to do once we can see it. They say, thus, the sense of yourselves as living in lack and poverty has no significance. So the fear that we will be in lack, the fear that we will be in poverty, they say it has no significance. It doesn't have the same meaning anymore. It does not matter to yourselves what is in physical presence because all is malleable, changeable, alterable. It cannot signify. So in other words, that there is a way for us to change what things are. And I don't totally understand how that will be. And like I said, it will probably be something we have to learn how to do. But the concept of lack doesn't make sense in that world. That where you can, it's like you can provide for things out of energy. So um, it cannot signify if you are unwell in a moment because you can transfer that awareness out of yourself. So this makes sense to me because I see this in healing where if I am working uh, in someone's energy field and I can see a density that is energy, it, you can take that density and move it. You can move it from one place to another. You, it is a thing. It's a physical thing and you can shift it. You can, and you can lift it. You can move it out through the heart space. It's, it is a, it's like a, like a density, like almost like a gaseous cloud. So this concept that you can, that you can transfer, if you're unwell, that you can, that you can work with that energy in a different way is that makes absolute sense to me. And I have seen it. Yeah. Um, and magnify what is uh, pleasant. You have the ability to consciously transfer, right? So transferring things, transferring energy, alteration of things in your physical arena becomes a reality you can experience. So this is kind of mind blowing, but I, there, and I, like I said, I don't know if that's in our lifetime or if we get some of this or a little of this, we will have to see. So physicality is not as dense as it has seemed, right? It is not as it has been. 
We are physical touch. So in other words, this concept, you press on a desk, it feels like a desk, not the same anymore. And this, you can also, so you can touch it, feel it, experience it, and you can also change its significance and in significant ways. You can alter its shape and contortion in some cases. You can make it feel differently to yourselves. You can alter its energy and thus its countenance. So it's like we can't change exactly what it is. We can't change it at its foundational level, but we can change, here they're clear, they say, you can change its significance and you can change it in significant ways. So you can change what it means to you. So how you experience it, you can change. Um, so you could take something that was maybe rotten and make it fresh. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Like maybe you take a rotten vegetable and you make it healthy again, maybe. I don't know. But you can alter its shape. So you could make something into a better shape. It fits better, I guess, The cont and contortion. So if something is fitting together, two things fit together, you can make them fit together more easily. You can make it feel differently to yourselves. You can alter its energy and thus its countenance. So you can, so you do that, you change the surface of it, what we see by changing the energy inside of it. So that's the way. So in other words, if you see something that is carrying an energy of, say you have a piece of a head of lettuce that, that grew, under circumstances where they didn't get quite enough light. And so it's kind of weak and it carries the energy of like struggle because it struggled to find the light. You could alter that energy of struggle and change it to the energy of abundance or shift it, right? Heal the energy of struggle and bring it into a, a higher frequency. And then that would change the appearance of a lettuce and make it, make it, you know, look wonderful. I think that's what I, that's how I would read that. That's how I would, under, and that's what makes sense to me, knowing what I know about healing and, all of that. So yeah, it's super, super interesting, you guys. Um, all things are permeable to your perception, to your knowledge about them. You exist in oneness with everything and can alter the substance of what is around yourselves. And yet you are living in physical presence on the earth. So we're still just as physical. We're still living here, but we see and work with everything differently. So this is like mind blowing stuff to me. And yeah, I like, I'm talking, I just feel weird to just say this, like, oh yeah, like this is going to happen. <laughs> like it's, it's total sci-fi. It really is. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, Sherry says, thank you. The words are comforting. I'm so glad. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, M says, thank you for explaining that during my awakening, I remember seeing certain plants literally glowing almost like that. I guess I was seeing the energy. I always wondered what that was. Oh, awesome. Wow. That is so cool. Um, uh, Rebecca says for someone surfing ambiguity every day, this is deeply consoling. I totally agree. Krista says I had a shamanic journey where I had, I said, my son is an alchemist. He might have skills in changing matter. Oh my gosh. I bet you that is true because that would be a gift. So maybe he came to teach people how to work with the energy. That is so cool. So awesome. Hmm. So, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So they, uh, they go on to say, okay, uh, the, they said that we'll be like, yeah, be learning to, to, to man to be more fluid, to manifest what we are needing in harmony with the planet and what we are seeing. So in other words, we're not changing its fundamental beingness, but we can change the energy it has. So that, you know, that there's certain frequencies about what it carries and that then changes it in some important ways. So, um, and they said, not all will feel this presence as we have explained. Some will feel great resistance to the oncoming waves of consciousness that we are explaining. Some will feel themselves repelled, held apart, not participating. You will feel them and their experience and have sympathy and great, great compassion for their hearts or suffering. So here's interesting. This reminded me that and they say it will feel as though the earth has divided itself. And yet all possess the same terrain and substance of the plane of earth, though it incorporates two states of awareness. So this made me think about right now, we cohabitate on the earth with the elementals, right? With the, the, you know, if you believe in fairies and elves and all the things, and I have reason to believe in those, believe in the elementals. I have very good reason to believe in them, <laughs> which I will share at a later time. But, the, but, and I know a lot of you share that with me and um, they uh, exist in the same place that we are, but it's like two states of consciousness, two states of vibration. So we rarely overlap. And I think it'll be like that, although we will overlap like sharing this, but, it, but not quite as distinct, not quite as different, right? It's like, and so I think these images we've had of like mitosis where the earth is pulling apart into two, I think this gives me the feeling that it isn't like it's literally becoming two different worlds side by side. I think it is a state where it is two states of awareness living on the same plane of existence. So that is what we see by the, it's like two, we live in two different worlds. Like there is the world of people who are like in this energy and, and living with this new reality. And there are those people who, who are not, 
who, who would like, who maybe will become, right? Because we, we always rec recognize there is not a circumstance where one group is better than the other. This is not the case. It's a case where we are all headed to the same end result. In the end, we will all at some point reun reunify with source. We're just taking different paths. And some people have chosen a more circuitous route. They And we can look at that and say, those people are just going for a deeper course in learning, right? They just wanted to spend more time, a more leisurely path, uncovering more about themselves. So consequently, they're still stuck in the mire. So we want to help them. We want to help them as much as we can to move into this higher state of frequency. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. So they go on to say... Um, where is this? Sorry. Uh, it, yeah. So that part. Yeah. Anyways, they cannot. Okay. The big thing they said is that those who are who this will not enable those who are unwilling to shift to return to the earth. So because this the, the we are shifting to this higher state of consciousness, people who pass who have not who, who do not desire to shift to this higher state, they cannot reincarnate here. And they've said that before that there will be an alternate world that is at that sort of 3D reality that are that is in the karmic construction where if someone wants to stay in that world if they feel like they have more to learn by going down that path they will then reincarnate in that new place and that coming here will now be at this higher state of frequency so new people coming in will be born into this new frequency um, they say you will feel the or I'm skipping a bit here but they say you will feel the earth as a new place of harmonic convergence where all experience is as one being to you feel her the earth within yourselves as yourselves as embodiment as what it is to be human it will become an embodiment connected to the earth herself as though her presence defines you equally with your soul and spirit as though you are one organism so literally we are so connected to the earth that you think about yourself the embodiment of your soul yourself your spirit right now add to that earth like you are so connected to the earth that it is like she is you in addition to your soul and spirit like it's like you're moving through the earth and it's like you're moving through your own body like how crazy and cool is that yeah um this experience will be available to yourselves relatively soon. And we know that's the angelic soon, soon, right soon. <laughs> but they're also saying heavy on the spring. Something's happening in the spring. I don't know. I think, I think we are in the thick of it. They keep saying we are at the doorway. We are in it. We're in the beginning. It has begun. Like we're in it. So I, I we, we will experience this, which is hard to imagine, but awesome. <laughs> And then, uh, and then this, now they're going to talk about how we will find ourselves in service. And they say, there will be many who are seeking the light, who wish to understand themselves, who are open to journeying, who are not established in the experience of life as hardship, but who are open to the light, who are willing. A great, vast number of peoples will be willing to experience the light within themselves, but have hardship in the encounter. They cannot diagnose for themselves where there is difficulty and will see yourselves as illuminated and have the understanding that you are of a quality that can help them. So if you are a light worker, and I know you are, <laughs> like we all have gifts to share. And it's they're saying this is the time we are being called to bring those gifts into service and to help others and to help them to find their pathway home. And this is going to show up in so many different ways. And in some cases, it's going to be in a very local way, in a way where you're helping the people directly around you, you're helping your family. In some cases, your neighbors, anybody, right? Anybody who asks. Um, and then in some cases, it's going to be really stretching yourselves and putting yourselves out there in new ways. So yeah, it's going to vary person to person, but just know that there will be an enormous need, that an enormous need, yeah. And, uh, and then my friend asked, does this come through the solar flare we've been expecting? And they says it does now. Yeah. Solar flux in, uh, energetic. And then here, this is a, this paragraph I, I marked. This is about the three waves. They say the endowment is coming in the near future. There will be a mirror image of this flash of light, three waves. So three, another, like a mirror, it'll be identical. Like, like this, the, it'll come three times. In other words, like it's, re well, they, the mirror image is like, I think it's, re it's a reflection. Like it's like, Anyways, we see it three times is what they're trying to say. Three times in coming, each experience becomes more potent and more powerful. So they're gradually increasing as though the gradual elevating of humanity is considered so that all may participate now if they are consciously present and willing. So it's like they turn up the volume a little bit each time so that we can move up with it. So we can acclimate and adjust between each one. Three consciousness waves elevating humanity. And then she asks next about war. And she says, and they say, yes, it is pressing on us uh, in greater depth and profundity. There'll be hardship around this concept of hatred against each other. This is really, they're emphasizing that separation is coming to the planet. Separation is exposing itself. Separation, separateness is coming to the forefront of the human consciousness. And this is for a couple of different reasons. It is for healing, absolutely. 
but they also want us to not forget the lessons of separation, to understand what it has been to be separate, because it's only within the state of separation that we really have learned to understand ourselves as an individual soul. And as we move into the state of oneness, they don't want us to just blend into the oneness. They don't want us to completely forget our own identity. They want us to bring our identity into the oneness, to be one and then with the all. And so, uh, you know, to be an individual and with the all. And so they're bringing, they need to heal the separation, but they also need to emphasize the separation. So it's both. We want to know who we are and we want to feel the all and be able to share that who we are with everyone, right? To add that to the consciousness, to the collective, not to just to blend into everybody else, not to just become like everybody else. So it's like that, that's the distinction. And they say that that would be the downfall is if we were to just lose ourselves and lose our sense of self and just become one big blob it would not be good. <laughs> so, okay. So they go on to say that, uh, the, that, 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 that they talk about, they mentioned Europe. I know we also have like major, major stuff in the Middle East. There's stuff, I mean, like, it's kind of like everywhere. It sounds like it's kind of everywhere. They mentioned Europe, I think, because there was some question around that. And then they specifically focus on the, on the United States. Um, uh, they said there will be great divisions. So this is where they're talking about the separation of the United States that is no longer one unified country. And they've mentioned that several times. Um, that uh, increasing division to the point of separation amongst yourselves, the point of inconclusion in your practices. So in other words, the way this happens, they said before, it's not by civil war. We don't fight with each other, which I'm so glad to hear. That That is instead, it's a situation, they say, where things are no longer perceived as needing to be done or followed. Rulings do not belong to one another. So in other words, the thing that keeps the federal government pa in, in power is that it passes, it, 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 the states comply with the decisions that the federal government makes. The federal government says, we want everybody to do this thing. And if you do this thing, we will give you funding for your freeways and funding for your this and that. And then the states just decide, nah, I'm not gonna do it. We don't wanna we don't wanna participate anymore. We are, and as a matter of fact, we're not gonna send you money anymore. We're just gonna keep it for ourselves and we're not gonna participate in what you guys are wanting us to do anymore. So they just bow out is what it sounds like. To the, uh, so in conclusion, in your, so to laying down the practices of being what we have to do to be one country, that where things are no longer perceived as needing to be done or followed. Rulings do not belong to one another. Inacceptable in some places. So that some places they will be like, well, I don't like that law. So look at right now how some country or some states are voting on their ballot to exclude certain candidates from the ballot. And some states are, so they're really saying, okay, like federal government has one idea, we have a different idea, and we're going to pass local laws that change the dynamics of a national election, right? So interesting. So it, where they just decide that idea is unacceptable to us, and we will just not follow it. So they simply relinquish their hold, their grasp of belonging, let go of their affiliation to this greater country, which you have called home, let go and surrender their belonging and become in and of themselves their own country. So think about this in the recent uh, uh, outbreak of war in the Middle East, um, uh, both California, I heard this, um, both California and Florida, their governors went to visit, uh, visit over there as if they were like a national uh, you know, envoy to go over to, to, to represent the, to represent California or Florida. But when has that been a practice, right? It's never been a thing where the states have to go represent themselves internationally. It's always been a thing where the federal government does that. So how weird is that, right? These little things I'm looking at, I'm going like, okay, I see this happening. I see it in strange, strange ways happening now. So as, as inconceivable as it sounds, it's not, it's not totally inconceivable. Um, they say this starts becoming reality within this next period of opening. The states unravel and become separated and find between themselves new alliances. Yeah. So then they go on to talk about the earth changes. This is a big section. They say the period, a period of lack and starvation are coming to this plane of existence. So they don't really mince words there, lack and starvation. So that, but they're clear what creates starvation is and what create uh, is, uh, and that it's a short term is solute short short term problems that they tell us what will create the circumstances of starvation are being in a place where food cannot be grown and and or where you can't can't provide it for yourself that uh, you know and then they say what well, they get they tell us so if you really are living in a place that that's the case maybe you figure out a solution maybe you stockpile some stuff even though they don't want us to do do the prepper thing but but you got to think about that like ask yourself the question is this is there available to me here 
Maybe it's available over roads, and so that makes it okay. It's just, I think they've only specifically mentioned shipping, but the circumstances where things are difficult are where if you are a country that depends on having stuff shipped to you, that is not a great thing in this circumstance. Um, uh, a great unearthing of the planet, as you are aware of, which is this concept of, and they talk, they say it is a, a, a geomagnetic, geomagnetic disturbance and polarization becomes irregular. Polarization is like the magnetic pole of the North, North and South poles. It becomes, so that, that idea of where are our poles and they move, they're not always in one place. They kind of move around and they've been moving a lot and they say now it becomes irregular. So that makes me think of like flickering almost, right? Like, like, and this is that jiggling I was talking about, that uh, they say it becomes irregular. There is a global dislocation of energetic pole, which moves. So in and among yourselves, great torrents of water. So there is a disturbance, a geomagnetic disturbance, and polarization becomes irregular. Their pole, the pole of the polarization uh, moves and it shifts. The, so I see it's almost like it's back and forth and it creates this jiggling motion. And this jiggling, it's just like if you had a glass of water and you jiggle it, the water's going to slop up or out of the glass. And it's the same thing that the water will slop up and out of the ocean. And that's how I would interpret that. So, and does this happen everywhere? I mean, maybe. And how jiggly does it get? I don't know. I mean, it probably depends on how much water is being moved. It's hard to say, but but we'll just take it. At, I mean, I always find when I try to make conclusions based on what they say, I, I'm better off if I just listen to them verbatim, to listen to just, to just what they say and try not to get it too much in here. Because when I start trying to interpret it, I frequently get it wrong. Um, but so let's just look at what they say. They say that energetic pole, which moves in and among yourselves, great torrents of water, not as it has been discussed, right? Not to the point of extinction by any means. So it's not a thing where we're all washed away. This is not happening, right? But they say, um, there is in this destabilization, a great turmoil and thrusting in the oceans, a great magnetic pole, which forces the arrival of the disturbance of the crust. And there was expulsion. So the crust of the earth, because of this pull, not only does it shift the oceans, it alters the crust of the earth. So I think earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and they have told us about the earth rift. They, and there, I have a channel message in our YouTube playlist that is, and it says earth rift. And so you can find, if you search, it's way back. It's way back at the beginning when I started my YouTube channel, but it's in there and it's a, it's a, it's a doozy. And they talk about the earth rift. And so this is, I think, what they're talking about. So they have never before really explained what creates the earth rift. Boom. Here it is. Yeah. So the arrival of dis disturbance of the crust and there is expulsion. So stuff is going to be coming up out of the earth. And I think this is what probably creates the cloud layer they're talking about that, right? That, 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 uh, that then makes it hard to grow stuff. Energetic turmoil and creates this upheaval, geomagnetic, as we have spoken, which creates upheaval in the crust. And this could be related to the flashes of solar energy that hit the planet because uh, and I know this is debated in science, like not every scientist agrees with this, but to me, there's so much evidence that it's true. Like there's such a correlation between solar influx, solar wind or massive radiation to, you know, hits a planet. And then we have earthquake. Like there seem to me, it's like, like I, to me, it seems really clear, <laughs> but I know there's a lot of scientists that are like, that's not true. So whatever, but <laughs> that's my, that's my truth. I call that as my truth to my truth. There is a connection. And, um, and so it could be that these influxes change and create this disturbance, this magnetic change. That could happen, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, the displacement of water, which does engulf certain territories. There is an inundation in certain places which cannot be avoided. So this is something that, that uh, to know, like I said, it's the jostling of the water. The circumnavigation of the planet becomes difficult. Um, uh, it cannot be found as it was. So, and this is the idea to, um, that idea of, gosh, I have, this is so much energy, you guys. I am so dizzy right now. Like I'm literally, this is nuts. Um, so just, I guess I would just say, be aware of that as you're receiving the message that there's a lot of energy flowing through this message. And I'm sure, and they're telling me they're doing this because they want to help people with fear. So there's an enormous amount of energy moving through as we're Words we're talking about this to try try to help people with fear. So just please receive that. Please receive this in light and in compassion. And please receive this uh, as a sense of just they're, they're trying to share with us so that we can receive what happens uh, from a place of understanding and, and know that it was coming and not be surprised, not be shocked. 
right? To just take it in and be ready. Yeah. And to, to, to just let it, to be in flow, to be allowing. Um, Lisa saying, uh, state governments too, which is more controlling in some areas like mine. Yeah. Karen says, uh, what did I miss? Uh, what I didn't miss it. Yeah. Yeah. I know this is a long one. <laughs> it really is a long one. So then they go on to say, um, uh, the circum, okay. The circumnavigation of the planet becomes difficult. It cannot be found as it was. Great changes take place on the surface of this plane of existence. Things are no longer, uh, right. There's a great dislocation of soil, of earth movement within the crust. So the whole concept of, of, of travel by ocean sounds really challenging. It sounds like there could be even movement of bodies of land could move which might make like navigation really confusing. But I also think if you think about the jostling of the ocean, what does that do to ships? And what does that do to harbors and to ports, right? So all of that could be the reason why we can't navigate the, the earth as easily by boat. Uh, they uh, The next paragraph, they talk about this as a new paradigm. They say, you find yourselves thrust forwards, not backwards. So this doesn't, this brings us into a new state of being, right? So we may have temporarily a state where we are we're returned to pretty basic rudimentary living because we are, are such a globalized world and that may be a lot more challenging. So there might be massive shifts that there's a temporary period, but in the long run, we are thrust forward, right? Forward into greater prominence on the earth, brought into a space of more freedom within this locale, greater, resist, uh, uh, greater resistance and restrictive practices are let down right? They cannot be succumbed to any longer. So they're talking about this is what it will be like, right? To be human. It must become a state of free thinking, forward thinking, forward practices to draw forward to humanity what will encompass a new belief system, new concepts of being alive, what it is to be human, all changes. So this is, all of this is propelling us into this new way of being with each other, of being human, which is so cool. And you're saying, um, uh, 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 Andrea says, is the earth rift what's happening in Greenland? I don't believe they said that it would happen in the Indian ocean somewhere. Um, John says, thank you for the glowy message. <laughs> we can all be glowing in oneness. Yay. <laughs> and Teresa says, I imagine the ports will be gone. Yeah. Or, or heart, you know, damage for sure. Right. Lisa says it will be affect oil and gas. So all transportation, basically, I think so. Right. I mean, like for, like we can't, Maybe in your own area, maybe look to how oil and gas is delivered to your area. Is it delivered by boat or is it delivered over land? Like in, in over land, if we have a lot of earthquakes or shifting, that could affect pipelines. So at least temporary disruption or maybe infrequent. It might be what they, when I've channeled on it, they said, they said irregular availability. So it could be a thing where sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, uh, but I think it's also a thing where we all work together then, right? It's maybe be carpool to the grocery store if they're, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, uh, okay. The next thing, climate, uh, they say there is within this process, this great shift. There is an, the upheaval of the climate. Uh, you were wondering about growing food. Will it be possible? They say, uh, um, that yes, in some places that not in all places because of the inundations where the waters come in, they say that in those places with the inundations that they're not, they're no longer inhabitable. Uh, but that the, they can no longer be claimed for the human population, but in places where there are people, the earth is readied. Uh, the topsoil is good. So it's the topsoil is fine. Like in, in places where we settle, where people live, we will be fine, but it's just in these places where we can't live, obviously, that you can't grow food there. That the places where there's inundations, where there's some of these major earth shift problems are not so good anymore. Um, uh, but, and I think that it might be because of the shifts that some places sink and some places rise. So I think that might be what they're talking about. Um, but you will find yourself struggling to provide the same nutritive density for some time because the solar availability will be more limited. So this is a, a res, res, result of enshroudment by clouds. This is the planet. Imagine that there's just, it's like gray day after gray day after gray day. And we'll still be able to grow some stuff, but it's going to be, look, think about what plants look like when they are grown without enough light and they get really yellow. Their leaves are yellow. They're stringy, right? They're just not as good. <laughs> like they're not as healthy. So, um, they say that, uh, uh, that it will be a lesson for a short time, which will impact foodstuffs globally. It will not stay long, however, but they say one growing season is enough to create disharmony and starvation. And then they say, do you understand us? So they want to be clear about that, that, that it is enough to impact us so that we should consider that. Right. Then, uh, and then my friend asks, uh, to grow, to, to, to grow cold weather crops. And they say, correct. 
And then they say to also use like UV lights if you want to, you know, um, uh, and there's things you can do. Like, like if, if it's a situation where you just, there's not a way to really get good fresh greens. I talk about growing, um, uh, sprouts, sprouts need almost no light to grow. You can grow them in, even in a dark apartment, you can grow them on your kitchen counter and, and you can grow, like I have this little like $20 plastic tray system where you can grow like a new, like you just start a new tray and it, they, they kind of take about three days to sprout within three days. You have a whole tray of fresh greens and they're full. They're actually more packed with vitamins than a, a real, like a full, you can grow broccoli sprouts. They're better for you than a regular head of broccoli. And it takes three days. So just maybe you just have a bunch of that seed, a falfa seed, a seed, broccoli seed, and you put it in this tray and you do like a, like a teaspoon for each tray. And you just keep like every day you start a new one, right? And, you start, and then three days from then, you know, you'll have a little tray of sprouts. And if you just have your rice and beans and you have your sprouts, like you're, you're in good shape. Like you got good stuff growing. Maybe you grow a bunch of different types of radishes. There's loads of things you can grow as microgreens that take very little time and very little light to grow. So there's things you can do that are not hard and that do not cost a lot of money. And just look at, okay, if I want to have a teaspoon a day of seeds and then, and then work that out over a year, how many teaspoons do you need? And that's what you buy. And seeds are not that expensive. You know what I mean? In this little, literally $20 stacking plastic, there's a bunch of different models, but the one I have is that and it's cheap and it works like hot darn. It works really well. Um, and like I said, it does not require sunlight even. So even on a cloudy day, you, yeah, I put it in the windowsill, but I, I, when my last place I used to live, I, my apartment, my condo faced north and I had it inside the kitchen in a dark spot and it grew just fine. So yeah. So anyways, um, but they also talk about having, there's lots of people who have, uh, um, like little, I used to, I have a couple of these too. <laughs> They're like, uh, I can't remember what the name of these is. If uh, some of you know what I'm talking about, they are these little kits that you can buy that has like a, a LED light on the top and then like little holes in the bottom where you can put plants in that you can grow salad greens. You can grow, if I get a little thing or there's plant towers that come with LED lights, but the little ones are, are pretty cheap. They're not that they're, I mean, they're not really cheap, but they're, you know, I don't know, not too expensive. I think they're less than a hundred dollars for this kit that comes with the LED light and you plant these little things and you can just continually rotate and grow heads of lettuce in it. But yeah, Aero Garden, thank you, Patty. Awesome, yeah, exactly. Little Aero Gardens and they have sales. You can buy the ones that are like the old model and they're not that expensive um, uh, to have a little kit that's just on your kitchen counter and you can grow yourself some fresh lettuce. So think about that. Imagine like, yeah, there's gonna be some things available, right? There's gonna be stuff out there, but maybe you wanna have really nice fresh greens because you love that. So grow some on your counter and or grow some sprouts it's, you know what i mean it's it's that's the reason they're telling us is to let us know like hey this is not change yes not the same anymore but it's worth it amazing stuff is coming and we just need to kind of be prepared for a period where things are going to be a little bit harder because we have built a world that's really dependent on globalization and that's not going to work anymore so we just need to have some solutions in place for ourselves but know that we're going to be fine it's going to be okay yeah um, uh, and you're saying that's what a tower garden is, indoor growing. Exactly. Yeah. And you, at least it says most places in the world is not, do, it's not domestic. Yeah. So really look at that. Like it, it's something that we can all do our homework is what things are, are grown locally or what, what things are, are shipped. Like where does your food come from? Like in the, in the U S the, the California is like the bread basket of the country. We get a lot of food from California, but a lot of places grow something locally. So what is that? What do you grow locally? And are there local pea patches or local gardens everywhere with this big emphasis on organic and locally grown almost everywhere in the U S at least has like local organic farmers who are trying to do more localization. So find, tap into that, find out who those people are, right. And, and start creating community now so that it's there for you when you need it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, what are they saying? And yeah, and there are such a thing as cold weather crops. So like one of the things that I have growing now uh, in our garden is mosh is a type of lettuce that grows in the wintertime. And we have a cold frame over it, but it's open on the sides. It is happy as a clam out there. And we have some 30 degree days and it is growing. I have beautiful green lettuce. And same thing with, um, uh, we have kale out there growing really, really well right now. So there's things you can grow in the, in the winter time. No problem. Um, in cold weather. So yeah, they say avail yourself of illuminative sources, which is like LED lights. If you want to do that. 
um, uh, then they do warn, they say places that do not have foodstuff availability generally will find themselves without much. There will not be the shipments to which they are accustomed. There will not be the availability of foodstuff to be transferred via the oceans. There will not be the exchange of foodstuff between countries and many nations count upon this, right? Many places are without their own indigenous ability to grow things, but where that is not the case, there will be enough. So to me, that is, it gives us a really good rule of thumb to understand like where we are right now and, and what we need to think about. And I, like, I know in, in my area, like there's a lot of there, I know where the farms are. There's lots of farms around here and they grow, you know, different things. And like I said, so there might not be everything, like it might be a thing where, uh, like what you have available to you. Like I remember my mom telling stories about the great depression where like they pretty much had rice and raisins for dinner for lots and lots of nights, you know, but they were fine. And she's, you know, she grew to a full height and she's healthy and, you know, like we don't need as much as we think we need. <laughs> like we can do with do fine with a lot less. And this is a temporary problem. So the big thing is don't fear and then recognize we are going to be shifting in our vibration in a way that we will start to be able to work with our environment in a really different way. And that is, I think, what to focus on in this message, to focus on the, the incredible beauty of what's coming to us, the divine presence, that we will become divine presence, that we will accept this into our bodies, right? That we will become and hold that light. And at the same time, we become the earth. And so, so we navigate the world like it's part of us and we feel it and see it in a really different way. So this to me is what I take from the message. That's what I'm focusing on and what is just amazing to me, which is so incredibly exciting to me. Okay, you guys, this was long. Thank you so much for sticking with me. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So, um, and so remember in this, they talked about also having a way to purify your water. So to so have that in your mind as well. And other than that, like, let's be ready, you know, start brushing up on your willingness to see, start brushing up on your ability to allow and start thinking about the joy you will have in helping others, you know, because that's what's coming for us. That's what's going to be so incredible coming forward. And uh, Teresa says, yes, like the old ways. Thank you. You're so welcome. Em says, this was long, but great. Awesome. Thank you. So beautiful, says Andrea. Awesome. You guys sending you tons of love. And I'll see you guys next Friday live. Bye, you guys.